This is the second talk on the first day of the short course at UNAVCO on GNSS data processing and analysis with Gamut Globe K and Track. My name is Mike Floyd and I'll be presenting this short lecture on uh, the workflow of Gamut and Globe K. We'll be talking about the inputs, the basic programs and the sequence of processing and then the outputs uh, from Gamut, which become inputs to Globe K, and then the outputs of Globe K. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, the scripts that control Gamut and Globe K, uh, each of which have a built-in help page, which you can read by running the command uh, with the command name only, and then pressing enter. Each of these scripts is contained in the ggcom directory. The main programs for Gamut are contained in the ggGamut bin directory, and the main programs for Globe K are contained in the ggKF bin directory. GG here is a, a link, a symbolic link in your home directory that points to where you installed Gamut Globe K during the installation process, and it should never be removed. Um, Gamut Globe K requires this link to find uh, particularly tables that it needs, and so it's important that that link always remains in place so that Gamut and Globe K can find the tables and other uh, pieces of information that they need to run. Once the software is installed, you will then go about choosing the data that you want to be processed over some interval of time, set up the strategy for processing with some files, which we will mention in this talk and then cover in more detail in a later webinar, and then use this program SH Gamut uh, to actually do the processing for you. <clears throat> Globe K is then used after the daily processing to combine the results and uh, create time series, velocities, change the reference frame, all of these kind of things. So Gamut really does the uh, phase and pseudo range data processing, which is data that comes directly from the receiver. Globe K takes the output of Gamut and actually creates a geodetic solution that is more meaningful to most people, time series velocities, uh, in particular chosen reference frames. Now we're presenting these webinars uh, as open webinars um, and hopefully everyone who is uh, listening will have installed the software uh, at this point, it is very helpful to have installed the software so that you can familiarize yourself with the programs and the sequence that we're talking about as we go through the webinars on this course. Running the example, uh, what we now call test install, is a good idea to make sure that the installation was successful and it also gives you an idea of exactly what this uh, sequence of processing is for Gamut and Globe K. So the basic stages of uh, using Gamut and Globe K for most geoscience are that uh, you're gonna have uh, data collected uh, or archived, perhaps in a public archive, where you may have collected in the field. This needs to be converted to RINEX files. Uh, this is the receiver independent exchange format. Uh, and this is the basic input format that is expected by Gamut. So if you do have your own raw data, uh, you may use uh, programs such as RMPKR00, which is a Trimble program, Tech, which is a program provided for, uh, by UNAVCO to translate edit and quality check. Uh, that's what TEQC means. But we won't be covering these programs here because we are only gonna be talking about Gamut and Globe K themselves. So we do expect you to be able to um, either uh, create or download RINEX files that you wish to process. When we read in those RINEX files to Gamut, uh, Gamut basically runs through three programs. Uh, the first of which is a program called Model, 
and that creates theoretical observations uh, based on things like the site position, the satellite positions, the frequencies uh, of the observables, and other things like um, atmospheric models. The uh, data itself is cleaned um, by this uh, program AutoClean, and then the program Solve, which is the third program uh, that Gamut, main, third main program that Gamut will run, actually takes the theoretical observations, the cleaned data observations, and solves for the chosen parameters, such as uh, site position. The output of Gamut then is what we call um, the ASCII H file. This is a plain text file. Uh, the name of the file begins with H, which is why we call them H files. Uh, and they contain the parameters that were uh, estimated in Solve. Uh, this sequence often gets iterated. In fact, it will usually get iterated more than once, uh, hence the uh, arrow going back to the top here. And so the output ASCII file will be the final of those iterations. Uh, you can save preliminary iterations if you would like to, but generally we just output the final iteration solution. These uh, plain text H files will be uh, used in Globe K to generate time series and velocity solutions. The program GL Red is generally used for uh, creating time series, and the program Globe K combines uh, data together over space and time to produce velocity estimates. The program GL Red is actually uh, just a way of running the main Globe K program uh, over and over again for many uh, days uh, in a row uh, so that you produce uh, one solution per day as opposed to uh, one solution for an entire interval of time. So the basic inputs uh, and outputs, just to reiterate in word form, uh, the RINEX data must be prepared for uh, input to Gamut. Uh, we can download RINEX data from public archives, which we will come on to later. But if you do have data of your own, you will need to translate it to RINEX uh, in order to run with Gamut. The output from Gamut are then these ASCII uh, plain text H files, as we call them, and they contain the loosely constrained solutions with the a priori, a priori parameter information, uh, adjustments to those parameters from solve, and the full covariance matrices associated with those parameter estimates, along with some metadata like the uh, antenna models that we used, the satellite models that we used, uh, the number of observations, these kind of things. And uh, you can read the ASCII um, H files if you would like to see what information they contain, but fundamentally the information that we're carrying forwards in addition to that metadata are these a priori parameter estimates, the parameter adjustments and the full covariance matrix. The input to Globe K are uh, a converted binary version of the H files, uh, converting plain text to binary format is helpful for efficiency of the computers, uh, storage, uh, speed of reading in and reading out, things like that. So the first thing that we do is we convert the ASCII um, to binary H files using this program called H to GLB. Uh, or this, is, this program is invoked if you include the minus opt H option when running SHGL red. And we will again come on to these later in the course. The final output of Globe K is then what we call the .org file. This is the normal uh, file that gets output from Globe K. If you're doing things significantly differently to the standard practice, then you may have other outputs, but essentially this .org file is the uh, fundamental output of Globe K. And that contains all the information that you've asked Globe K to estimate, uh, including uh, time series information or velocities, and we have programs that can read this file, this org file, into a time series format that we call the .pos file format, or a 
basic uh, velocity format, which we call the .vel file. So the basic uh, sequence for gamut, for anyone who has been through the test install example, you will see that the first thing that you did is run a program called sh setup. And what this does is it checks and creates uh, the links to tables that you need to process gamut, uh, especially grid files. Um, and you will need to be careful about linking things like grid files, depending on what you have selected to process with in the session table, sestable, which can be found in the tables directory. This is one of the main controlling programs for the processing strategy. You will need to place any of your own Rhinex files into uh, a Rhinex directory. Uh, this can be simply made if it does not exist already. And uh, any publicly available Rhinex files that you have set up to be downloaded by setting a flag in the file sites.defaults, they will be downloaded automatically for you, so you don't need to do that, but you do need to specify which sites you want to include to be downloaded automatically in this sites.defaults file, which again is in the tables directory of your experiment. The next major thing to do is to prepare and verify the station.info file. This contains all the uh, metadata associated with individual sites, such as the receiver that they used, the antenna that they used, the height of the antenna, the station name, obviously, uh, and other things like that. And we can start this process using the sh update stinfo station info uh, script. This uh, uses either Rhinex files that you have or IGS logs from the internet or um, pre-existing station.info entries, which we try to maintain as much as possible at MIT for you for sites that we know about and are generally globally available from uh, public archives. The important thing here is to make sure that we verify this, um, this file. It's a very important file and the script does its best to create the file that's needed. Uh, but sometimes it doesn't quite work uh, properly, so it is important to check that the file actually contains all of the information that you expect it to. And next we prepare and again verify the uh, a priori coordinate file, which we, we call the uh, .apr file. So we generally have the extension of .apr. Again, this can be uh, started with the SHRX2APR script. This is uh, Rhinex to APR. And that will take the Rhinex data that you have and some broadcast uh, ephemeris files and try to calculate uh, approximately where the site is. Again, we maintain tables for you that we um, have for known, well-known sites from public archives. So you can also build an APR file for other sites around the globe that you might want to use in your processing uh, as well. But this script is helpful for your own Rhinex data. Once everything is then set up, you will run SH Gamut. And SH Gamut is the main script for running the gamut part of the processing, the phase and pseudo range processing. And it will essentially use the information that you've given it in the tables, station.info uh, and the .apr file to uh, estimate site coordinates and any, any other parameters that you wish to be estimated. So let's look in a little more detail about what SH uh, Gamut does. As I said, it's the main script for running the Gamut part. And it uses these files uh, to uh, understand what you want it to do and how you want it to do it. These files are generally created or copied from the main uh, installation tables directory by SH Setup. And then you may or may not want to uh, edit these files as necessary. One file is the autoclean command file, which is probably unnecessary to edit. This controls how autoclean uh, cleans the data uh, before it is uh, fed into the solve module. 
the process.defaults file, uh, probably not necessary to edit it very much, but uh, for those of you who did go through the test install example, you will have seen that one of the things that we recommend is actually inserting your email address into the file um, near the bottom of the file so that the summary emails from the gamut processing, the SH gamut processing, uh, are actually sent automatically as an email. They do also exist as a text file, uh, so you won't lose anything if you don't set up email. Um, and your computer that you're processing on actually has to have a mail server running in order to be able to send the email anyway. So sometimes you won't see that um, email summary file, but it exists anyway and you can look at it in the processing directory. As I said before, the session table, Sestable, uh, controls the experiment observations and models. Most of the defaults uh, are okay, but you might want to edit it depending on exactly what you want to do. The defaults in this file are generally what we consider to be the most up-to-date uh, strategy, including um, up-to-date models, the way that we do things essentially at MIT for our operational processing. So most of the time you can leave the defaults as they are, and that will be the current best strategy for um, processing the data. The sites.defaults file contains a list of, list of sites that you wish to process. Uh, specifically, it's important to list the sites which you want to be downloaded from public archives to include in your processing, perhaps alongside Rhinex files of your own from your own network. The uh, sites table, uh, sitable, controls a priori constraints on the site coordinates and again is probably unnecessary to edit. These a priori constraints basically give Gamet an idea of how confident you are, uh, how well you know the uh, a priori coordinate which is contained in this .apr file that we also spoke about on the previous slide. So uh, if you have very poor a priori coordinates, you might want to set the a priori constraints to be a little bit larger, perhaps 10 meters or even 100 meters. But for very well known sites where we know the coordinate very accurately, we can reduce the a priori constraint. The default is generally uh, five centimeters for well known uh, site coordinates. The station.info file, again, we talked about that on the previous slide, uh, contains the, state, uh, the site metadata. And these last two files, as I said before, are very important to get right uh, before you start processing, in my experience, particularly with new users. About 90% of the problems often come down to one of these two files not being set correctly. And there'll be more detail on all of these files in, uh, in future lectures, in future webinars. So what does Gamut do exactly? Gamut uh, goes through a series of stages. Uh, firstly, it pre-processes, does some pre-processing. For example, it will download uh, orbits using SHGET orbits and prepare them in a Gamut-friendly uh, format with the script SHSP3FIT. Uh, we'll make the uh, clock estimates with uh, make J, download any publicly available sites that you set to be downloaded in sites.defaults with this shgetrhinex script, and it will convert those Rhinex file to a gamut format uh, for phase and pseudo range observations. And that program uh, that does that conversion is called make X because the gamut internal format files are called X files because they begin with the letter X. And then finally, the uh, final stage of the pre-processing is it will write a series of uh, batch files, B files, which will then be run to, uh, to actually do the processing. So the second step is that we'll perform that iterative solution of model, autoclean and solve by running the B files that were set up in uh, pre-processing. Um, the first thing is model, again, which creates uh, synthetic observations from the a priori parameters and the models that were specified. Autoclean uh, cleans the data uh, by uh, given uh, what observable you chose to process with, for example, the linear combination of L1 and L2, uh, LC. 
or uh, the independent uh, L1 and L2 observables, which might be useful for much shorter baselines, for example, um, below about 10 kilometers, uh, perhaps even just one or two kilometers is best for individual uh, independent L1 and L2 processing. And finally, again, solve uh, fits the calculated to the observed um, uh, data by solving for the parameter estimates. If there's any uh, large adjustments estimated in solve to the a priori information, we then update the a priori information before going back to model uh, and rerunning these three main commands. All of these steps are run for you in SH Gamut. Um, so you generally don't need to worry about most of these programs, uh, the, the way that things are run, you just need to run SH Gamut. But it's good to be aware of these programs because sometimes uh, you might want to do some preparation yourself. For example, if you wanted to download some orbits, um, prepare them in a way that is non-standard, you might run SH Get Orbits or SHSP3 fit yourself, or you might download Rhinex files beforehand. This is, this is sometimes a good idea, for example, if, you, if you're working in the field or you don't have a very good internet connection, you might download orbits to your local computer, like your laptop, so that you can then process when you do not have the internet connection anymore. So it really depends on your resources that are available. Then in uh, post-processing, uh, Globe K, we convert those ASCII plain text H files that come from Gamut into binary H files for reading into Globe K. And this will be done again by this program HGLB. That should be done in this standard directory called GLBF, although you can do it any way you want. This is just the way that we do things. It's generally a good idea to run a preliminary solution uh, or to create some uh, summary information by running glist. We do our solution in the gsolm directory, which again, we create if it doesn't already exist, but you can do it wherever you like. glist will create a chronological list of binary files and some other uh, summary information that's helpful for just making sure that your, your, your Globe K run will do what you think it's going to do. And at this point, the strategy will diverge depending on what you want to do towards your ultimate solution. Uh, there'll be more details about this when we talk about GLRED, Globe K, and GLORG, which is the last module that generally gets run to set the reference frame in the following lectures, the following webinars that we have later in this short course. Similarly to SH Gamut, there is actually a batch script called SHGL Red, which will run all of these commands uh, again for you in one go, provided that you have set up a certain amount of information beforehand to tell SHGL Red what you want to do. So that means generally editing the Globe K and GLORG command files. We have templates for these files in the tables uh, directory, the main tables directory. They're just called globek.cmd and glorg.cmd. And that gives you an idea of a sort of standard template for most people's uses. But again, it depends on exactly what you want to do. You may need to edit these files to accommodate what you really want to do with your solution. One typical uh, thing that we do, let's say, for example, if we are doing survey work, short term campaigns, is to create short-term combinations before creating uh, a much longer uh, velocity estimate. So if we were to do this, uh, this would be an example where we just combine a number of days over a period that's quite short, for example, a 10-day survey or bi-weekly or monthly combinations for continuous GNSS. Again, it depends exactly what you wanna do. But with uh, surveys in particular, one of the advantages of doing this first short-term combination step is that it reduces the short-term scatter of the observations and it also reduces the number of files that will be carried forward to a velocity solution. So effectively for one survey, you would end up with one 
uh, combined file for that survey, which can be uh, given to other people or combined with other work uh, in Globe K to produce your uh, long term velocity solution. In general, we would run uh, GL Red to generate a uh, time series and then plot those time series with uh, the script sh plot pos. We can then inspect the time series visually to identify and potentially remove any outliers that we don't want to corrupt the combined solution that we're about to run. And then for the short term combination where we don't yet want to estimate velocity, we would then run globe K to form one combined file, uh, an org file, uh, without velocity estimation. And the way to do that in the globe K command file is to have these uh, last three parameters here in the APR site or APR NEU commands. We set those to zero here in red. The difference between the APR site and APR NEU command is just simply a matter of, a matter of coordinates. APR site uses coordinates in a geocentric Cartesian reference frame. Uh, so that would be X, Y, Z with the uh, origin being at the center of the earth. And for APR NEU, the constraints are simply a local northeast up uh, coordinate system. So they are uh, effectively the same thing, just expressed in different coordinate systems. And you can use one or the other. The uh, long-term solution would then be done uh, again by sort of combining uh, your uh, daily continuous time series or your short term combined H files that we did that we dealt with on the la last slide over many years to create uh, a long term uh, velocity solution. Generally speaking, for meaningful geophysical velocities, we need at least two and a half to three years of data. Um, so that's maybe three or four surveys conducted once per year or two and a half years or three years of continuous data. Again, we go through much the same uh, process of uh, plotting the time series with shplotpos, inspecting those time series to identify and remove outliers, and then finally running globe K again, but now we are interested in estimating velocities because we have enough data over enough time to justify estimating those velocities. So we set these last parameters in red here to a non-zero number. Uh, for example, one is the standard of what we do. The units of these numbers here is, um, is uh, meters per year. So this would effectively be, be one meter per year. Uh, of velocity that is the constraint. So that's a very loose constraint. It means that the data controls the final solution rather than these constraints having an impact on the final solution. We want, we want loose constraints here. And uh, that is uh, pretty much the end of the lecture, just to say that SHGL Red again is capable of running all of these individual commands to produce time series, short term combinations, and long-term velocity solutions. So we will talk in more detail about each of these steps in uh, later uh, uh, webinars this week. But that gives you a general overview of the process, the workflow, going from input data to gamut to uh, the Globe K ultimate solution in time series and velocities.